Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you about a couple of great tools you can use for studying scripture. Uh, one of the best tools you can have is a study Bible. A study Bible really helps walk through so many of these things we talked about yesterday. It helps us walk through the context. It helps us figure out what's going on before and after, what historical events are happening. One of the great things that study Bibles have are these introductions. At the beginning of each book, there is an introduction. It'll say things like the author and date. It'll give you the background and the setting. It'll help you with interpretive challenges. So it'll talk about the things that are in that book that are difficult to understand. And it'll give the historical setting and the themes that are going on. All the things we talked about, the context, the genre, the audience, those things are being answered by the introduction often. Also, when you're looking for context, there is the outlines. They offer the outlines. I'm going to have a picture up there for you to be able to see. They offer the outlines so you can see, okay, so that's what's going on during that time. Also, study Bibles have specific notes. That'll help you with things I mentioned like people and places, like the audience. And that'll, that's a great asset to have. It's also great to have the references. I'll show you a picture of that as well. Those references help you to use other scriptures that have similar contexts and they use, allow you to use scripture to interpret scripture. I'm going to take a moment and show you guys a couple other free useful tools. Hey guys, all right, here. This is the tool I wanted to show you. Bible Gateway, Bible Gateway. One of the best things you can do when it comes to studying scripture is compare two translations. So let's say that you're hypothetically studying Judges 6. And I mean hypothetically, I'm definitely not using this chapter for my sermon this Sunday. So hypothetically, you're studying Judges 6, all right? So now you have Judges 6. I preach out of the English Standard Version. It's an awesome translation. Uh, it is comes from the line of the King James Version. It's fantastic. If, you, if you're a fan of the King James if, or you grew up using it, when you read the ESV, it comes off very similar. So ESV right here. Now this button right here, Add Parallel. All of a sudden now, you can choose between the translations you want. So let's say, I know a lot of you guys like King James. So let's say you are on this side using King James Version. And on this side, you want to say, what is that Pastor Ben reading in? English Standard Version. Oops, click the wrong one. Where are you? English Standard Version. There we go. So now you are able to compare the King James and the English Standard. And if you really want to, you can add another one. Um, New Living Translation. The New Living Translation is one that I use to when I am trying to figure out a more difficult to understand passage. So if you're reading something in the King James and you're like, wow, I, what is that trying to say? A lot of times I will shift over to the NLT and see what they have to say. And look at this. There's really not much difference between the three when you get when it gets down to what the information says but here you get to tr you get to look at three different translations of and see okay what are they trying to say now there's some other tools see this little wheel right here you click on that page options these cross references if you select it they add them in if you don't they're not there then the headings same thing why are these important cuz headings see how it says Midian oppresses Israel you click this they're gone the headings, Midian oppresses Israel. It lets you know what's going on in that section of the passage. And the cross-references are great to have as well, because watch what they do. They allow you to use that idea of scripture, interpreting scripture. You come down to the end here, okay? And verse 1, it tells you these other places in scripture where they have something similar. And the great thing about doing it online is all you got to do is click on it and it takes you there. There you are. You have it and you're like, oh, this is similar to what is just going on. Back button and you're back to your study. How great of a tool is that? 100% free. They have a trillion different translations. Uh, people argue about what translations best. Honestly, the best one is the one you're using. Uh, I like to take one or two and compare them. Uh, these are three that I use a lot 
New American Standards, fantastic. The NIV, I've, I used that for years. There's so many good ones. Don't get caught up in translation. But this is a tool that I wanted to let you guys see that it is available and it is extremely useful for studying scripture in the way that I presented it earlier. You, uh, yesterday, excuse me. And there's so many different options here for you to be able to use, and this is 100% free. And if you are can't have trouble reading it, it's too small. You have this right here to pick the size. So all of a sudden you're in giant print if you hit that. If you want to fit a whole bunch of translations, you can make it really small. There's so many options. And then you can even do things like print it or you can click share and you can put it on your Facebook or you can email it to somebody. There's so many great options for you to be able to use. You can even have it read it to you. So you click listen. The Gospel of Mark. And all of a sudden, it's reading this is the that good news scripture about Jesus to you. The Messiah, you get to choose which one you want it to be. It, you get to choose what you want read to you. It's a fantastic tool. Fantastic. And 100% free. So I hope you guys take advantage of that. I'm going to show you a couple more uh, great free resources. The next resource that I want to show you is called Blue Letter Bible. Let me show you why I love this so much. See here, you can choose a verse, a word, or a topic, and it will bring up all of them in any of these translations here. So I use ESV. So let's say I want to talk about a specific topic. I can go joy. And watch this. Enter. And all of a sudden, I have 179 different verses that use the word joy in it to use how great is that you can pick them and look at the on right here it shows you how many they have in different versions the niv the new living translation all these you can click on it king james very popular you click on that and all of a sudden you're looking at every single instance where it uses the word joy throughout the entire bible you can do different options so you can start to choose do i want it in the old testament or the new testament what book of the Bible do I want? So if we're in, again, let's use Judges. Where are we here? Uh, if we're in the book of Judges, right? And you want to be able to find a specific topic inside of Judges. Now I can go to Judges and I can say Gideon. This is every single time in Judges that Gideon is mentioned in the scriptures 37 different times how fantastic of a tool is that there's endless opportunities there's so many things for you to be able to do with this technology here it is a great tool that is for sure so let's say you get to the verse you want uh, let's say 613 that's fine you can click on tools and then there's a whole bunch of different things there are the different translations there are the cross references where okay judges 613 here's other phrases that were used that are found in different passages throughout scripture they have commentaries so you can go through these commentaries of these different people j vernon mcgee chuck smith matthew henry commentaries phenomenal they even have messages from alistair Begg here there's Paul Tripp, so many different options. So now I'm clicking on the commentary on Judges 6, and look at this. I am now for free viewing a commentary on the very chapter that I'm studying. And a commentary is a lot like a study Bible, where it gives you these different man's thought on what that verse and chapter and different things inside of it means. So this is a phenomenal tool for you guys to be able to use. It's a great resource and again, 100% free. I actually use a different uh, resource now called Logos, but that costs money. Uh, this is 100% free. I used this for the first three years of my Bible college. So it's a great tool, fantastic. I hope you take advantage of it. So there you have a whole bunch of tools, many of them completely free to be able to use. So if you get yourself a study Bible and then you use these tools, you can completely do the, everything that I told you that I do. 
You can walk right through the passage of scripture. You can go through a passage of scripture and be able to teach yourself or even have an in-home Bible study with your family or when things open up and we don't have to worry about the coronavirus. You can have an in-home Bible study with other people that you know and that you love or even your neighbor and that doesn't know Jesus. You have the opportunity to be able to say, hey, this is what this scripture means. There are so many ways to use these resources. I hope you guys take advantage of them. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me and I'll do my best to answer them. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.